finally figured out how to remove the EGR on the F22B2 intake manifold. I had problems with trying to get one of these nuts off of the EGR earlier. All you have to do is get it off of the car. To get it off of the car, you can take this clip and cover off. You could use a ratchet. I just use an extension, 12 millimeter socket, and an impact. And bumped it until it, it fit the nut and then popped it off. You can do it with both of them. There we go. So that's how you remove those. You just have to have it off of the car. I could not, for the life of me, with it on the car, get a hold of both of them. I could always get a hold of one of them, but not both of them. Let's we'll see what kind of horrors are underneath this uh, EGR valve waiting for me. Uh, it looks pretty clogged up. I'll have to clean it, definitely. And then there's the gasket. Uh, yeah, that's going to have to be cleaned a lot. All right, okay, so we're gonna take this apart and we're gonna clean it level by level. First, I'm gonna take the plenum off. These are all 12s. Turn it around. Okay, so two bolts on the back. Two nuts on the front and one bolt on the middle in the front. It just picks up. Old gaskets. Surprisingly, that's all in one piece. That's nice. Okay, use a 14. Undo these. these out of the way. EGR passage plate takes 10 millimeter. recently so that's not so bad. All right now I got the manifold down to where I can scrub it. I'll hose rack it down here. That's gonna be a 12. Put that off of there. This is good to clean so I'm gonna scrub the heck out of these and make them shiny again. Later on I'll probably upgrade to an F23A1 intake manifold. For now, I'm going to clean this up and just make it look pretty. This little vacuum housing on the back of the plenum. I can't find the gasket for this, and it's been discontinued by Honda. I've seen most people just use like Ultra Gray or RTV to uh, seal this up. So I'm going to try this new mixture out on cleaning your intake manifold. 16 ounces of 91% alcohol, about 8 ounces of acetone nail polish remover. It's this Onyx Professional and about a little over half a gallon of distilled water, just Walmart brand. And I've got one of these pump bottles. I'm gonna put it into a bin. I'm gonna spray the heck out of it. Gonna lightly go over this with a wire brush to break all of the crap loose. Just layered on. I'm actually gonna take this outside the tent. This is way too strong. Yeah, be extra sure to do this in a uh, ventilated environment because this stuff is strong. It's making all this glide off like butter. It's just easy to cut through. Okay, so we're gonna put the coolant pipe back in. Got these O-rings. These cheap Ajusa 
part number 1602450. They look like this. Got two of them. And these will go on the water pipe. Now everybody does something different when it comes to lubricating the O-rings on the water pipe. I've seen people use Vaseline. I've seen people use WD-40. I've seen people use transmission fluid. But the main thing that matters is getting the O-ring in the spots, making sure the spots are nice and clean. So these two areas here and here. And making sure that the rings are lubed with something. Now I've never had an issue with using automatic transmission fluid on the O-rings. So I'm going to get my O-rings on here. I'm just going to put them on like so. So we got this side. And I'll wait to put my other side on until I get my thermostat housing ready. I'm going to take a little bit of ATF and put it on the O-ring. I'm also going to take a tiny little bit and put it on the wall of where it connects. Just to make sure both sides are lubed up. Okay, I'm just going to guide this in. And line that up. We're just going to kind of wiggle it and it will slip in. God, I love Accords. That was easier than when I put the Civic one in. I'm going to put my bolt back in. I'm going to put in a new heater hose that runs to the water pipe to the heater. This is just bulk gates, 5 8 hose. This one, you actually can run without needing, needing a molded hose. The one that goes from the heater down to the valve, you do need a molded hose. I'm going to cut this one the size and put it on. I'm going to put these clamps on where I can get to them from underneath pretty easily. So after comparing both of these gasket sets for the F22B1 and the F22B2, you could use either one of these on a F22B2 intake manifold. Everything with these, same port sizes, same everything. The only difference being that this has little areas for the, the winter startup assist vacuum lines for the F22B1 manifold. And this actually fits completely square against the head and the intake. Uh, this one works just the same except for it's not entirely square cut. So either one of these would work. So I've decided I'm gonna go with the F22B1 intake manifold gasket set and I'm gonna save the B2 set because when I upgrade my manifold I'll have an extra B2 manifold and I'll have my B2 engine head. That way when I rebuild the B2 engine head I can just transfer the manifold over to it and then later on if I got a spare engine I can just drop it on there and I'll have everything rebuilt and ready to go for if anything happens and I need a, a backup engine or whatnot. So before anything goes back on the car I'm gonna put the EGR back on. So I got this part number 70978 just cheap ultra power parts. This is a same exact gasket that fits on a Chevy, fits on this. So if you've got any old Chevy EGR gaskets laying around, if you own a Chevy and a Honda, it's the same exact EGR valve shape. So I'm just gonna put that guy on. I got this cleaned up, go ahead and put it on. Just like so. that's on I gotta look up how much that gets torqued to. Torque on these is supposed to be 16 foot-pounds which it definitely wasn't by the time it came off. How accurate this is gonna be. There we go. So that was a little awkward but it worked. Let's put their covers back on. like that. All right. I'm going to set the manifold on and see how much room I have. I've put all my electronics over. That way it'll be easier to 
to do it because it's got to be ran underneath the manifold. I'm going to set it on and see if I have enough room to put the rest of it on because I still have uh, that heater hose that I still need. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, I've got room for the heater hose. I actually might have enough room to still do my fuel stuff. Yeah, look at that. Okay, cool. We'll put this together and then that way uh, I can get to retrofitting the fuel and putting some other stuff on. So cool, manifold will go back on. Okay, now I have to find out, is there enough room to get the second part of the manifold on? Yep, you sure can. You can get to the second half of that manifold. The intake manifold to head nuts are to be torqued to 16 foot-pounds. Due to the over and under nature of this, so I won't be able to get this on video. The general gist of it is to start from the middle and work your way out to spread the weight evenly. I usually start on the bottom. I'll run all these down hand tight and I'll start on the bottom and I'll start in the middle and then come up and do the middle and then I'll just spread it out evenly. So it would appear this engine head actually gave me three inches more space, it looks like. I didn't measure beforehand, but it looks like I have way more space back here. I've got way more space over here. And I noticed that this is where this hose used to hook up here. And used to run over the PCV on the valve cover. And that's like way overlapping. I don't know if that's the shape of the head or what. I do know I replaced that engine mount and it used to sit kind of like this but I don't know if that was the head or if it was the engine mount or both. But it's interesting I have more room. For instance on this side I could do both of my heater hoses from over here with the throttle potty off. I can actually full-on see the intake air temperature sensor right there. I'm going to have enough room here to actually do my uh, fuel system that I wanted to do on this too. 